Sunday on Denver 7. The search continues this morning after a day out on the water turned into a cry for help. It's windy out there and with weather like this, things can quickly change. What we know about the search so far. A day of record heat brought the fire. How Coloradans are working to protect themselves if the worst happens. <laughs> and an already important day got a special surprise for some indigenous students at Metro State. Details on how high your education is becoming more accessible. Good Mother's Day morning to you and thanks for watching Denver 7. I'm Jessica Crawford and I'm Katie LaSalle. Well, we start this Mother's Day morning with breaking news. A man is still missing after tubing on the Cherry Creek Reservoir. Our Denver 7's Christian Lopez is live for us now with what we know so far, Christian. Yeah, he went missing yesterday evening, but crews have since stopped their search because they have not been able to locate him. And we still don't know when they plan to head back out there to continue looking for him. But officials say that he went missing around 645 when he was out tubing. This was at the Cherry Creek Reservoir. They say that he went under and a South Metro Fire dive team was called out to the scene and they were searching for hours last night. There's a person in the water that was on a tube behind a boat. Um, they were not wearing a life jacket uh, when the incident was called in. It's always a good idea to be wearing a life jacket. It's windy out there and with weather like this, things can quickly change. A reminder to stay safe if you do head out to the water. Make sure that you inspect your equipment beforehand and of course you wear a life jacket. The State Parks Department will now handle this investigation and this is all developing so we will keep you updated as we learn more. Live this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Christian, thank you. It was a busy Saturday at multiple reservoirs across the metro. South Metro Fire and Arapahoe Sheriff's Office responded to a water rescue at Chatfield Reservoir. That call came in around 615 when the wind picked up and Poudre Fire Authority responded to reports of a missing paddleboarder and kayaker at Horsetooth Reservoir yesterday. Officials say missing people were found safe just after 7 o'clock last night. Oh, please be careful out there. Now we want to get you caught up on the other news happening across the metro today. This week marks 10 years since Denver's camping ban was passed. The ban is still being fought in court and an appeals court decision could come within the next few days. Today marks the start of advocates against the ban's week of action. There's going to be a community meals, trash cleanups and protests throughout the day today. That's starting at 930. You can head to Denver's Decade of Doom Facebook page for more information. Well, today is the last day of the Cinco de Mayo Celebrate Culture Festival at Civic Center Park. All weekend, there's been special attractions, musical acts, dancers, mariachis, and a lot more. This will last until 8 o'clock tonight. And if you want more information, you can head to Cinco de Mayo Denver.com. And here's an important follow up to a cute story we brought you a few weeks ago. Remember the mother goose outside that ARC thrift store in Littleton? Well, today is the last day you have a chance to name her. Just head to the ARC thrift store Facebook page to make your submission. You could win a 20 $25 gift card to ARC. The winning name is expected to be announced later on today. Yeah, that's fun. Let's take a live look outside right now. We're off to a mostly sunny start here across the Denver metro area. Further to the north, though, and into portions of the high country, we are picking up some moisture this morning. All is dry and calm right now over Denver City Park, but you head into Rocky Mountain National Park. You can see covered in low lying clouds, snow falling over higher terrain, and a rain snow mix down uh, lower levels. Temperatures outside right now are around 50 degrees from Sterling. Akron down through Colorado Springs into downtown Denver 40s already into many of our mountain towns and your fresh air forecast on this Mother's Day by lunchtime it'll feel pretty pleasant at 69 degrees not nearly as toasty as what we experienced on Saturday we're back to highs in the upper 70s today Denver Greeley Fort Collins still very hot over the southeastern plains 80s in Burlington 60s and even some low 70s into the mountains I'll take you the full future cast and when we're expecting our next chance for seeing more rain across the plains still to come Rain is needed. Saturday, we had at least three wildfires burning across the Colorado. One in Key, one in Keystone behind the resort, another just north of Pueblo, and a third right near Conifer. Luckily, all of the fires are small, and crews were able to contain the fire near Conifer before it grew to an acre. Days like these remind us to be ready for fire danger, and there are steps that you can take to protect your family and your home. There was a wildfire community preparedness day this weekend, and as Denver 7's Patrick Perez shows us multiple agencies in the metro are making sure that Colorado families are prepared for the worst. As the winds blew on another critical fire weather day, 
Agencies along the foothills were making sure homeowners stay ready as part of Wildfire Community Preparedness Day. We need to have people get ready and, and prepared for wildfire. And generally, we're finding residents are not well prepared. Cindy Latham and her group Rotary Wildfire Ready helped put on Saturday morning's event at Elk Creek Fire Protection District in Conifer. We're trying to help people understand what they can do on their own property to create defensible space and harden their home. And knowing how to prepare for an evacuation and what to bring with you is just as important. Our first responders can only do so much, yeah, yeah. so we have to help. In addition to having a go bag ready, they also recommend having clothes ready to go in case of an evacuation. That includes clothes that have 100% natural fibers, a hat, some goggles, just in case there are any flying embers. That's on my list. Okay. That's on my got list. It. I've got that and my husband is going to help me on that. <laughs> he may not know it yet, but he's going to. <laughs> Belinda Kane Widener lives in Morrison and came out to Conifer to hear from the experts as a rep for her HOA. What she's learned about trees being too close to evacuation routes is something she'll bring back with her. It's going to be a process, but I think that the latest concerns and the emergency uh, wind issue that's going on now will kind of make us move a little bit quicker in a direction. It's not only crucial that homeowners remain prepared, but electric companies too. That's why Core Electric Co-op is using drones to inspect its 5,000 poles to make sure there aren't any hazards. We're looking for, um, you know, broken cross arms, um, uh, trees that are too close to the lines, anything like that that, that is a hazard. Um, we want to be able to identify and correct those issues uh, very, very quickly. At a time when a simple spark could ignite a wildfire, it takes all of us to stay prepared and be on alert. And on those days that are even worse, like red flag warning day today, we're a little more on alert. In Conifer, Patrick Perez, Denver 7. And we're just getting started for you here on Denver 7 this morning. Coming up, Indigenous students at Metro State will soon have easier access to higher education. It's thanks to a new grant, what that means for their community. Plus, trade school enrollment is up. We're taking a closer look at the numbers and the increased interest. And before we go to break, we want to take time to wish some moms a happy Mother's Day. We're starting out with my mom. Thank you for being my biggest supporter. I appreciate every phone call. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Aww. And to my wonderful, amazing, kind mother, thank you so much for all of the love and the care that you give to our family day in and day out. It is so appreciated. We love you so very much. And we'll continue to highlight more of our co-workers' moms throughout this morning's newscast. We'll be right back.